Hey friends, Pastor Bill Walden here with Build Up the Church. God bless you. This is a devotional word for October the 19th, 2024, and this is out of the book of 1 Timothy. Uh, 1 and 2 Timothy are letters that the Apostle Paul wrote to his son in the faith, Timothy. Timothy was a faithful companion. Uh, Paul spoke so highly of Timothy. Uh, he said, I have no one else that thinks about the church and feels about the church the way that Timothy does. Uh, he thinks exactly the same things that I do. He feels exactly the same things that I feel regarding uh, the, the well-being of God's people, regarding the gospel, uh, regarding uh, the philosophy of ministry and the practice of ministry. Uh, Timothy was just um, an amazing son in the faith to Paul. And Paul had left him there in Ephesus to take care of a church that had been planted. And the church at, at Ephesus I needed a lot of correction. Uh, you know, if in today's days, uh, if a young pastor wanted to start a church, they would probably warn him against going to Ephesus. It was a difficult place uh, to serve Jesus at. And yet Paul said, I want to leave you there, uh, Timothy. You need to straighten some things out. And so the, the book of 1 Timothy is really Paul's instructions to Timothy, this young pastor, um, who needs a lot of direction and a lot of encouragement. And we don't really have time to go into a character study on Timothy, but he was a timid man. He was a fearful man. Uh, he was a weak man in many ways. Uh, not, in, not in his faith regarding Jesus and the truth of the gospel, but in his own lack of self-assurance and his own uh, inhibitions and fearfulness around people. So tough assignment for this uh, young pastor, Timothy. Paul is reminding him about his own conversion. Paul told Timothy, remember my conversion. And then he goes through a list of things. And he means it to encourage Timothy. And I believe Paul is telling Timothy his, his testimony once again. To remind Timothy that God can use anybody and does use anybody who will surrender their life to him. So we pick up the story here. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 12. He says, and I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has enabled me. Because he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. I like reading parallel Bibles. And here's what the New Living Translation says. I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has given me strength to do his work. He considered me trustworthy and appointed me to serve him. So Paul's giving all the credit to God. And he says, it's God that enabled me and, and he counted me faithful. He saw something in me and he called me. And he says, verse 13, although I was formerly a blasphemer and a persecutor, and an insolent man, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. Verse 13, New Living Translation, even though I used to blaspheme the name of Christ. What an unlikely candidate uh, to call to the office of apostle in that first century church. Paul was previously a blasphemer and a persecutor of Christians. He thought it his duty to protect Judaism against this way called Christianity. And so he uh, imprisoned uh, Christians. He caused them to deny Christ. He even stood by uh, at the uh, stoning of the first uh, Christian martyr, uh, a man named Stephen, and he approved of it. He didn't get his hands dirty with the stones, but he was glad to hold all the coats of those who were killing Stephen. And so he approved of the death and the murder of Christians. And he says, but God considered me trustworthy anyway, and he pointed me to serve him. He says in verse 13, Even though I used to blaspheme the name of Christ, in my insolence I persecuted his people, but God had mercy on me because I did it in ignorance and unbelief. I was blind. I was foolish, Paul would say. Verse 14, New Living Translation. I'm just going to continue with this version for the rest of our time together. He says, Oh, how generous and gracious our Lord was. He filled me with the faith and love that come from Christ Jesus. God indeed was merciful to Paul. Paul was very aware of his own sinfulness after he became a Christian. He could look back over his shoulder and see the damage that he had done and the grief that he had caused people and and the, and the imprisonment, and all those things that I mentioned, uh, not to leave out the grief and pain and sorrow that he caused God. That God had mercy on him and chose him anyway. Verse 15, 
Paul says, this is a trustworthy saying and everyone should accept it. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners and I am the worst of them all. In the New, in the New King James he says, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Everyone on earth is a sinner. And we just need to accept that fact. That's what the Bible says. And the wages of sin is death, eternal separation from God. But God is reaching out in mercy and reaching out in love. And he wants to save people. And he wants to see them understand their need for forgiveness and then ask for that forgiveness. And that forgiveness is freely given because Christ died on the cross to pay the penalty for our sins. You can't say it enough. The justice of God wasn't uh, overlooked or swept under the rug. It was fulfilled. The satisfaction of the court of heaven was fulfilled when Jesus stepped in and said, I'll take their place. And so Paul says, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Note what he doesn't say. He doesn't say to improve their life or to bring some spice to their life or help them in ways that they can't help themselves or kind of give them uh, an example of self-improvement and positive thinking. He doesn't say anything. He says, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And that word save, it's the Greek word sozo, S-O-Z-O, and it means to save from judgment. And so Jesus certainly did that, and that's how the Christian life starts with a person, to ask Jesus to forgive them, and they are granted immunity. They are granted a not guilty verdict. And not only that, but they are granted a citizen in, in good standing with heaven, righteous, seen as holy. But the word sozo, salvation, saved, also means to bring health and wholeness. And the Christian life is certainly that, isn't it? It, it starts with being forgiven, but it goes on throughout the life of a Christian uh, to, to bring wholeness and health, healing in the mind, healing in the emotions and the psyche, to treat the whole inner man uh, and help the inner man be healed of everything that damages that intangible part of a man or a woman. Paul goes on to say, verse 16, God had mercy on me so that Christ Jesus could use me as a prime example of his great patience with even the worst sinners. Then others will realize that they too can believe in him and receive eternal life. It's kind of like, hey, if... Uh, somebody could look at Paul and say, man, God saved that guy. He can save me too. And so Paul admitted that he was one of the worst case scenarios. But the worst case scenario among men presents the best case scenario with God. So some things to think about. God bless you.